Yes, good evening. Good evening, Mihir and uh, Prerit. Greetings. I am uh, Mrs. Vibhavari Kulkarni, Science and Maths teacher, Parletilak Vidyale English Medium School. With me is Prerit Moria, a student of class 9 of our school. Together, we have the honor of interviewing the distinguished alumnus of our school, Mr. Mihir Gotikar. Mr. Mihir Gotikar is the executive director of HD Fire Protect Private Limited, a leading manufacturer and a global supplier of firefighting products. HD Fire Protect Private Limited has been involved in designing, developing, and manufacturing a broad range of world-class firefighting equipment and systems. HD Varsha nozzles, manufactured at HD Fire Protect in Jalgaon, were used in the launch pad of Chandrayaan-3. We have with us Mr. Mihir Gotikar, who will be interviewed by me, Mrs. Vibhavari Kulkarni, and our student, Prerit Maurya. Welcome back to school, Mihir. Heartiest congratulations. Your organization's contribution to the Chandrayaan-3 mission is indeed commendable. We are so proud of you, your journey. It is my privilege to interview you. With me is Prerit Maurya. Let's get started then. Yes. Okay, Mihir. Uh, kindly provide an overview of your post-school journey and uh, inspiring success story. Thank you, madam, and thank you, Prerit. Uh, it's great honor and privilege for me to be able to reconnect to school after 26 long years. And uh, thanks for having me over. So uh, I am alumni of PTV uh, EMS. Uh, I graduated uh, in 97, so I completed my 10th in 97. Uh, then chose science field, so attended uh, Sate College Science. Uh, then after my 12th, I entered an engineering program, BE, and I finished my BE in biomedical engineering from a college called Thadomal Sani Engineering College, TSEC, uh, in Bandra West, Mumbai. Uh, after my engineering BE, immediately I went to the US and uh, pursued my master's degree uh, in US in Florida. Uh, after my master's, I was working in the US, uh, initially in a medical device company called Baxter Healthcare. And then from there, I went into technology consulting uh, in the US. And uh, during that time, I had a chance to uh, travel around US, uh, work with uh, many companies throughout the US, as well as uh, some companies uh, in Europe and Asia. Uh, in 2009, early 2009, my wife and I, we moved back to India and we got into a uh, business of uh, manufacturing and supply of firefighting products. Uh, our uh, office, uh, back then our office was in Thane, uh, a small office. Uh, over the period of uh, 14, 14 and a half years now, we have expanded. Uh, our factory, the main uh, unit is in Jalgao and uh, office still remains in Thane. In 2013, again, I had a small academic break and I went to the US again and pursued my uh, executive education uh, wow. management from Harvard Business School, Boston. Uh, and then I finished that in 2015. Okay. Uh, and then uh, about our company, uh, as uh, you know, we are in, into manufacturing and supply of specialized firefighting products. We supply to uh, industries like oil and gas, petrochemical, offshore, uh, power sector, steel industry, aviation. Uh, of course, ISRO is an exception, but space uh, when it comes to ISRO. Uh, then data centers, warehouses, and buildings and commercial uh, entities. So we are actually having different uh, verticals in our business, different products for different firefighting applications in several industries. Uh, today, we export our products to more than 75 countries across the world, uh, and we have supply throughout India. We have an office in Singapore and another one in Spain. And uh, that was a little bit of my journey in a nutshell post-school. Wow. It's simply wow. Yes, sir. Prerit, do you have yes. something more to ask? Yes. Sir, could you please tell us about the role of HD Fire Protect during the momentous launch of Chandrayaan-3? Yes. So uh, Chandrayaan-3, no doubt, uh, it will always remain a special project for us. Uh, where our products were used. But let me give you some background about uh, how uh, these products were used uh, by ISRO. So ISRO originally got in touch with us in 2012. Okay, that is many years ago. 
uh, that time they were in process of developing GSLV rockets. So GSLV rockets were heavier rockets uh, after their previous generation that was PSLV. And then uh, they were coming into rockets to carry heavier payload, more than 2000 kg payload. So they got into GSLV. Chandrayaan-3, which is LVM, is also next generation GSLV only. So for the for those kind of rockets which carried which were heavier, uh, there is uh, there is bigger thrust when the rocket is launched, and there is bigger sound also sound energy also when the rocket uh, rocket lifts off. So they wanted a water deluge system. Basically, uh, it's a system to absorb excessive sound which is emitted during rocket lift off. So they were researching back then. This is a decade ago on how to how do we absorb excessive sound and ensure that there is no damage done to any electronics in the area because of that excessive sound or the sound waves. So uh, this same technology was used by NASA also. But the thing was we need to have this technology at, at a very minimum, you know, uh, realistic cost. And we don't want to spend exorbitantly high on something. So then we got in touch with, uh, ISRO got in touch with us because we were their vendors uh, for other, some other projects. And we discussed the concept of these nozzles. So they had a very clear idea in their mind. Each nozzle should be having certain flow, uh, certain spray pattern, uh, certain velocity of the water to absorb that sound. And they, they had all these specifications in mind. And then these nozzles were developed. Uh, these were used in Chandrayaan three, Chandrayaan two also. Okay, and uh, when the uh, when the rocket was launched, excessive sound was absorbed by Varsha Master Stream nozzles, and uh, these function these uh, functioned very successfully. So after the liftoff, also we got in touch with ISRO, and they also confirmed that they worked well. That was indeed a significant contribution. So, sir, now I would like to ask you that what specific function uh, are the HD version nozzles exclusively designed and developed by HD Fire Protect? Yes, these are exclusively designed and developed by us. Uh, as per ISRO's uh, specifications, they had some metallurgy. So, these were manufactured in aluminum alloy construction. And they also had some specifications of the spray pattern and the water jet and everything else. So, these were custom manufactured as, as per ISRO specifications, but these were completely manufactured in-house, designed in-house by us and manufactured by us. That's huge. That's really huge. Yes, sir. Uh, Mihira, uh, what is the specific function uh, you tell me did the HD Varsha nozzle serve in the launch of Chandrayaan-3? So, uh, 88 of these nozzles were used. Uh, each nozzle uh, had a spray of more little more than 3000 lpm and uh, honestly they were actually functional only for 20 seconds before lift off so during lift off when there is excessive sound and they want to reduce the sound below certain decibel level so the water jet that was coming out of these uh, nozzles was able to absorb the sound and the water level was drained through a tunnel there was an overhead water tank and then the water was drained off. So for, for the, those 20 seconds are really critical. The speed of the rocket is uh, actually uh, more than the speed of sound. Hmm. Because of the sound waves, the surrounding electronics can be damaged. So the purpose of the nozzles is to absorb the sound energy. So water jet absorb the sound energy and the water was flown out. Okay. My God, so well thought. Uh, Mihir, can you tell me some of the unique and uh, specialized technology that your uh, company has developed? So we are uh, primarily into specialized fire protection. We have three kind of uh, specialized technologies. One is water-based firefighting products. One is foam-based huh. firefighting products. And third one is gas suppression systems. Okay. Uh, water-based is for any household or any uh, class A that we call any regular fire. Okay. But foam-based system is specially for fires which are fuel-based. So any flammable liquids, any fuel, any hydrocarbon, any alcohol. For example, uh, there are uh, we uh, there are so many facilities in refineries where a lot of such uh, fuels are stored, right? So all these storage tanks need a very specialized firefighting system. 
because even if one storage tank uh, uh, catches fire it can lead to very big explosion mm -hmm. affecting the whole area like the whole mm -hmm. city also so the the technology is that as soon as there is fire within 5 seconds it has to be controlled by foam mm -hmm. so foam is dispersed or discharged on the fuel surface within within seconds and the fire is controlled and any major disaster is uh, prevented Okay. So we are specializing these kind of technologies. So we understand user requirement in very high hazard uh, industries. And then we offer these kind of very specialized solutions. Sir, has HD Fire Protect offered fire protection services for any other initiatives undertaken by the Indian Space Research Organization? Yes, we have been working with ISRO for past many years. Uh, in fact, in the launch pad at Sri Harikota also, uh, we have supplied our medium and high velocity water spray nozzles for the protection of trenches over there. So this is over and above the noise suppression system that uh, we were in, uh, involved in. Apart from that, uh, recently we have worked with ISRO for protection of their IPRC facility uh, at Mahindra Giri, Tamil Nadu. Mm. where they have their assembly unit and their propellant storage areas mm. as well as they carry out some manufacturing of uh, you know other equipment which are used in uh, in uh, all of their projects so for that they needed a foam suppression system but the operator has to be able to uh, operate that foam supp fire suppression system from a distance of 150 meters oh, so from far away distance so we have designed a, a mobile foam suppression system, uh, which has a, a firefighting cannon, which will throw foam in a in specific direction and the direction can be controlled with a joystick uh -huh. uh, by the operator. So the operator will sit remotely uh, in a control, control room, control center or somewhere remote. And he should be able to operate the fire extinguishing system with a joystick. So this is one of the uh, recent examples uh, for ISRO project. Uh, well, that's very nice. To what extent does fire protection play a role in the successful execution of space missions? So there are two uh, things here. Uh, space missions consist of extremely expensive uh, re uh, re items which are you know custom manufactured uh, where a lot of research and a lot of efforts are invested. So all these things are very precious and you don't want all these things to be affected by any, mm -hmm. any accident like fire. So one has to be very particular in uh, protecting yes. the area uh, like IPRC, right? One has to be very pro uh, particular to prevent fire and if there is fire to control it within very short time. So one has to be very particular in it. Then there are two uh, chances of fire. There's there is fire at uh, du during uh, before the liftoff and after liftoff. So after liftoff, one, one, once the rocket is out, technically in the space there is no fire because there is no oxygen. So fire triangle needs fuel, oxygen and temperature. So it, only if all these three things are together, only then fire will occur. And since there is no oxygen outside Earth's atmosphere, then there is no chance of fire. Although there... The only thing is because of extremely high temperature, some material damage could happen. So that precaution ha has to be taken that the temperature should not increase beyond the threshold. Mm -hmm. But while here, before liftoff, uh, uh, of course, uh, fire protection is extremely necessary. And uh, any kind of accident or any kind of possibility of fire has to be prevented. Mm. That's so nice and such a detailed information you have given it to us. Uh, Mihi, tell me one thing. Uh, what message would you like to impart to aspiring students who desire to pursue a career in the field of science and uh, aspire to create an impact? Yes, so uh, science is very integral part of our lives. Whether you are from science background or not from science background, science is affecting each and every one of us on a daily basis. Yes. If we go 20 years back, 25 years back, there was no cell phone today. All of us are hooked on to cell phones. We are at 4G and then coming up with 5G. So science has been very integral part of our lives. So uh, of course, if anyone has keen interest in science, they have to pursue it. Uh, it could be any area of science. It could be material science. It could be aviation. It could be 
physics it could be chemistry it you know there are so many different streams of science and each stream has its own a uh, very vast uh, area to have uh, you know career or to have opportunities in it now consider fire protection also fire protection if we think about it we only think about portable fire extinguisher right that yes. all of us have seen but who has thought about fire protection of you know very specialized applications which is also equally critical as that small fire extinguisher so it could be any any field like uh, it's it's going to impact us it could be computer science it could be data mining it could be artificial intelligence you know it could be automation uh, software uh, you know there are unlimited scientific fields and uh, my my uh, message is uh, one should be able to have the curiosity mm, true and also liking to learn more to, yes. to be inquisitive as yes. a uh, there is uh, science is constant learning for all of us uh, you know may be any field even for me uh, or any anyone we always have to learn even teacher will agree that even she has to learn yes you know, always because it is never uh, complete right uh, today we have certain syllabus or certain concepts tomorrow again there is something new and yes. then we need to learn so we have to have that curiosity in us uh, we don't have to i mean the goal shouldn't be to top the class or be in first okay that's a good goal to have but that's that should not be the only goal or that should not be the you know ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to learn to learn yes. right and if yes. we are fun in learning we'll be able to implement all the theories and whatever that that we have learned effectively so the ultimate thing is learn be curious be inquisitive and you know do pursue scientific uh, you know any kind of science, scientific field so nice yes i too agree with you everybody has to take keen interest in studying the science studying all the concepts in science in depth i agree, really agree with you uh, mihir we are so thankful to you and thank you mihir for an insightful interview here's wishing you all the very best in all your future endeavors thank you very much thank you madam it was yeah. my pleasure and as i said it was great honor for me to be part of this zoom call and i hope to stay in touch with you and uh, see definitely. what how i can connect for other school initiatives also in future yeah definitely definitely thank you thank you sir thank you Thank, Thank you, sir, you, sir, for an interview. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.